Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Momocon 2024, which was the biggest event that took place this weekend, coming in at a B plus tier. And there was some crazy upsets that we're going to get into. But first things first, we got to talk about our top 16 finishers. You got the Buzz, Light, Aaron, and Vivid in 13th. Teaser, DJ Don, Danny, and Kobe in 9th. In 7th, you're going to have so first things first, we got to talk about our top eight seeds that did not get into the top eight. You actually had five of them falling beforehand this tournament, which is pretty crazy, especially considering this event wasn't even a major, but people were just punching up something about that Georgia air. The first one is going to be tweaked, fairly self-explanatory. He didn't show up, so he didn't get top eight. Next up is going to be Mr. E. He ends up falling to DJ Don in the winner's side and to Buzz in the loser's side. Manages to take it to game five versus the Buzz, and it's honestly a pretty unlucky draw to get him that early in the bracket, but Mr. E is a player that I've been very impressed pressed by recently he does have high variance but when he's playing at his best i truly believe that he is the best lucina player in the entire world and his floor has gotten so much better recently even if he's not firing at a hundred percent he's still getting consistent placement 17th at a b plus here is nothing to sneeze at so props to him for the run you're also going to have cosmos finishing in 17th place he's going to end up losing to mugen in the winner side of the bracket and that is a matchup where i would favor ages but it's not like roy has no options it's still a very good sword character versus another very good sword character and in the losers bracket he ends up running into light which is definitely a pretty unlucky draw not only is it just you know light but they've also played each other a ton before they're really close friends so you never want to knock your boy out that early on in the bracket and who knows maybe cosmos was just like you know what light you're more likely to make a run than me so i'm gonna let you win this one so at least one of us gets into the top eight but as we all know it uh didn't turn out that way so let's talk about that light run. He ends up losing to Kobe game five in the winner side of the bracket. And this isn't the first time that we've seen light fall to a young link player. Most notably toast at frostbite. And there are some pretty good tools for young link in the matchup. You have a really strong at a shield game. Fox is absolute combo food. You're able to edge guard the character pretty efficiently. And in the reverse, Fox isn't able to get that many edge guards on young link, which is the main flaw of the character, at least in my opinion. Now it's not an unwillable matchup by any means. If I had to guess, it's probably even, or maybe slight Fox favorite just because you do have a reflector that is able to send all those projectiles back to you like, and you still are a very overwhelming character so it's going to be a matchup where light just has to put in a little bit of time maybe tweak his game plan and i think that he should be fine but props to kobe for getting the upset on him this time around and in the loser side as i already mentioned he takes out his boy cosmos but then ends up getting three owed by chunky kong and i want to save that for when i talk about chunky kong but for light 13th place at a b plus tier it's not the end of the world obviously it's not a great placement is it gonna hurt him super hard on the rankings is it gonna knock him out of the top 10 probably not but the way that this ranking season has been recently it's so close small margins are going to matter so we're honestly just gonna have to wait and see the repercussions of this event but at the end of the day this isn't a major it's still 13th place it's not the end of the world and the final top eight seed that doesn't manage to get into the top eight is going to be the buzz. He ends up losing to Danny game five in the winner side, beats Mr. E in that game five, like I mentioned, but immediately after that falls to Beast Mode Paul in a 3-0. And I'm honestly surprised that the buzz doesn't go min min in this matchup. He ends up going Rosalina, and I do think that it is a pretty difficult one for Rosa. The one good thing that she has on her side is down B is a super strong tool. But aside from that, hero just destroys Luma. You're gonna be outranging Rosalina, and also you get mana for hitting Luma. So you could just be wailing on both the characters mana really isn't a factor You're pulling out a thousand spells a minute even if rosalina sucking a couple of them up it really does not matter and minmin i think is actually a pretty good choice in the match if you have a reflector you're able to kind of beat hero before he's able to take out the spell book but at the end of the day it really does just come down to which character are you the most comfortable on the buzz clearly the most comfortable on rosalina and it just doesn't end up working this time around and it's a similar situation to light where 13th place at a b plus here isn't a terrible placement but it isn't a great placement either so so it's just kind of okay. And I gotta give the two link players a pat on the back of this event because they did incredible. You have Spritzy finishing in 25th, you have Spider finishing in 17th, and you have Vivid finishing in 13th with the best losers run of the event of the ones that didn't get into the top eight. He ends up losing to Goblin fairly early on and then beats Melee, Tavares, and Dominator to get into that top 32. Once in the top 32, he beats both AppleWiz and Wasabi before falling to Omega. And let's get this very, very clear. I still think that Young Link is the best of the links, and Kobe is the highest placing link at the event, so basically, the information is on my side, even though you do have three two link players getting into this top two, two, and the character does have a lot of strength. I think the frame trapping is really strong, and that's why you're seeing them emerge right now in the late game, kind of similar to Corn. You just have these lingering hitboxes like up air, really fast hitboxes like back air. You have bomb to pressure stuff as well, and your normal combo game is also pretty solid. You have amazing kill confirms with just anything into forward. It's just such a potent move. The flow 
floatiness of the character i also think is really good for a character with a sword just because his pressure is so scary up in the air and while i don't think the character is incredible incredible i would still put him somewhere in the top of mid tier maybe the bottom of high tier at this point he's definitely growing on me but i think young link is absolutely broken so two link players you are impressing me but i'm not buying your propaganda and the final three players I wanted to talk about at this event all conveniently got ninth place, so shout out to them for that. Makes it a lot easier for me. The first one is going to be Teaser. He ends up getting wins on 11 Dominator and Yugen to get into that top 8 qualifier. Ends up losing the Cola in the winner side and then Beast Mode Paul in the loser side. And Teaser has been having an amazing resurgence. We've only seen him at two big events in 2024 and he's done incredible at both of them. He definitely has what it takes to reclaim that title of the best Samus player in America. And off 2024 results, he probably is the the best Samus player in America over Icy Mist. I really hope we get to see him at a major because I honestly have a lot of faith in him to continue doing these incredible runs. You're going to have DJ Dawn finishing in ninth place as well. He's going to get wins on Mr. E and Omega to get to that top eight qualifier. Ends up losing to Wilds in the winner side and Chunky Kong in the loser side. And DJ Dawn is one of those players that we all kind of knew he was going to be really good. It was just a when a child prodigy in the making. We're finally starting to see him at some of these big events and he's just performing time and time again. So big props to him for the run and the final one is going to be danny he ends up getting that really nice win over the buzz before falling to jazo in the winner's side ends up taking riku to game five but ultimately falls there riku had a crazy run at this event we'll get to that when we get to that but danny's a player that i think is one of the hidden talents of america he is so good at this game fundamentally just super slotty kind of have to be with wolf in the current meta of ultimate and i think wolf is a character that if you are playing him correctly if you're doing the crazy stuff you can take him super far and if danny and he continues attending events i think he's going to continue having these amazing runs just a super super talented player and since i mentioned all the other ninth place finishers you got to give a shout out to kobe as well as i already mentioned he gets that really nice win over light before falling to wrath in the winner's side and omega in the loser side that conversation of the best young link player in the world is honestly a really tough one just because there's so many amazing ones but i would have kobe as the best young link player in america maybe you'd still give it to skittles but i've just been really impressed by his play and now he has a light win under his belt Anything for a plug, I realize I talked about all the players that finished top 16 except Aaron, so I'm going to talk about Aaron now. Sorry for leaving you out initially. He ends up losing the Wilds in the winter side, gets wins on Huampi and Mugen, and then ultimately falls to Riku for 13th place. Does take it to game 5 though, and considering that matchup is very bad for Diddy and Riku is on a heater at this event, I do think that is pretty impressive. And Aaron is a player that I would just love to see more at events. He is incredible at this game. I think if he was consistently going to stuff, he could be one of America's best. He plays Diddy Kong in such a different style than Tweak but it works so well. Diddy Kong is one of those characters that you can just play in a multitude of ways because Banana and Monkey Flip just give you so many options. So hopefully we get to see more of Aaron because I just like watching him. Full bias. So let's get into this top eight. And if there's a player that I left out, you're curious about their run, just leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to tell you how they did and sub while you're down there. But our seventh place finishers are going to be Omega and Beast Mode Paul starting off with Beast Mode Paul. He's going to pick up a win on Apple is before falling to Jazzo in the winner side, then beating Kendrick Lamar fan 19 to buzz and teaser to get into that top eight before falling to Chunky Kong in a game five. And even though Hero versus Rosalina is a matchup where I would favor Hero, it's still very impressive to 3 0 Debuzz with any character. So massive props to him for that one. Beast with Paul's been honestly having a pretty solid 2024. Aside from Genesis, he's got 17th at Gommel. He's got a 17th place at Cirque. He's also got 9th place at Levitational. Sent for that Diamond Dust. Now he's got a 7th place at this event. I do think that Akka is going to be the highest ranked hero player of the season, but there is a very real possibility that Beast with Paul can steal it back in the second half of the year. He's a phenomenal player, and this is just another great run to add to his belt you're also going to have omega finishing in seventh picking up wins on viri and riku before falling to dj don then beating vendetta vivid and kobe to get into that top eight where then he loses the run back to riku but omega was cooking at this event every single time i see this guy he gets better and better and i truly believe he has what it takes to become the best joker player in the entire world he's still got a little bit to go because players like subaki and mk leo are so incredible but the improvement that i've been seeing from omega i think that's realistic by the end of the year he's gonna be in heavy contention for that title our fifth place finishers are going to be Riku and Chunky Kong. And these are the two players that are both in the conversation for the best run of the event. They were so incredible starting off with Riku. He's going to get a win on Spickles before falling to Omega and then ends up winning six sets in a row, beating Fusix, Spritzy, Goblin, Aaron, and Danny to get into that top eight. Once in the top eight, he gets his revenge on Omega 3-0 and ends up falling to Cola in a very competitive game five set. And something in particular that I thought Riku was doing a really good job at this tournament was using gold as much as he could. Every single time Riku 
Pico had an opportunity to craft a gold tool, he would do it. And I don't know why other Steve players aren't doing this because first things first, gold is just broken because the frame data on your moves is so much better, but you're also going to be mining faster. You're also going to have the opportunity to craft so much with Steve that even when your tools break, it really is not that big of a deal. I thought Riku was just so, so smart this tournament. He had an amazing run and the best losers run of the event. So props to him for that. You're also going to have Chunky Kong getting fifth place at a B plus here with DK. It doesn't make sense, but he keeps doing it. He's going to pick up wins on Jax and Sonido before falling to Wrath, then beating Spider, Light, and DJ Don to get into that top eight before beating Beast Blood Paul in a game five and then ultimately loses to Jazo. And we got to circle back to that Light win because it's just so impressive to do it in a 3-0 fashion as well. And Donkey Kong versus Fox is one of my favorite matchups in this game because both characters just destroy each other. The main flaws of both characters are their disadvantage and the main strengths of both characters are their advantage state, especially for DK. It's going to be a lot more polarizing in that aspect. When he gets a hit on Fox, he just takes it so far. Ding Dong is really good against Fox as well. I mean, it's just a good thing this tournament and Junkie Kong was hitting a lot of Ding Dongs. And it wasn't because he was super desperate just going for the grab whenever he could. It's because he was extremely patient. He's waiting for a whiff punish. He's waiting for him to hit a down tilt so he can confirm it into the grab. He wasn't taking a ton of risk. He was just playing extremely smart and getting these kill confirms at like 50, 40% consistently. It was genuinely incredible to watch. I also love the way that he uses up B. If he thinks you're going to swing at him instead of shielding, he's going to rip that up B and he's going to use the armor to secure that stock because that move is actually super, super good. Chunky Kong is so amazing at this game. I've said it before and I'll definitely say it again because he's going to continue having runs like this. I think Chunky Kong has the potential to be ranked top 50 in the world this season with solo DK, which is something that I never thought I would say. So massive shouts to him. In fourth place, you got Cola. Third place, Wilds. Cola's going to get wins on Ranger, Murph, Goblin, and Teaser to get into that top eight through the winner's side, where then he ends up falling to Wilds, gets a win on Riku, but then loses to Jazo. And I honestly don't really have a lot to say about Cola's run. He was the fourth seed of the event. He ends up getting fourth place. He just kind of performed how you had expected him to, but he's been having an incredible season so far. His only kind of bad placements, quote unquote, are 25th at Cirque and Gommel, but aside from that, he's got a 17th at Genesis, 5th at Levitation, 4th place at Collision, and now he's got another amazing result to add to his resume. So just shout out to him for having a really solid season. And Wild, the child prodigy, popped off so hard at this event. This is his best run to date, getting wins on Fusix, Aaron, Wasabi, and DJ Don to get top 8 to the winner's side, where then he ends up beating Cola, before falling to Wrath and Jazo. And Wrath is definitely a tough draw. The FGC characters just get absolutely destroyed by Sonic. And Jazo is playing out of his mind. We'll talk about him in just a second. But Wilds is such an incredible player. And he's so young as well. He has so much potential. As I've already said, this is his best run so far. And the next time we see him, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we saw him beating it. He's got the Kazuya combos unlock, of course. But fundamentally, as a player, he is already so impressive. He doesn't really seem to get affected by nerves that much which is pretty surprising just considering that he does not have a ton of experience and once he gets that experience he is going to be a major threat and he's already getting third at events like this it's pretty crazy in the grand finals, it's going to be all Georgia. And shout out to Georgia for how well they did this event, getting four of their guys into the top eight, holding it down for the home team. But Jazzo and Wrath did so, especially with their second and first places, respectively. Jazzo's going to pick up wins on Sisalex, Beast Paul, and Danny to get into that top eight through the winner's side. Ends up losing to Wrath, but then beats Chunky Kong, Cola, and Wilds before losing to Wrath once again. And this was easily the best i have ever seen jazza play i was so impressed by him at this event that cola went especially so not only because it's cola but prior to this jazza had a 2 and 16 record versus cola now he won their last set now he's won two in a row maybe things will start turning the tide we're just gonna have to wait and see but the way jazza was playing it started giving me a little bit of faith in ken he was using the upbeat for the anti-air callouts he was so patient in his combos reading the di just really really happy with how jazza played massive props to him but it wasn't good enough to take out Wrath because he won this event. No sets dropped. The only player that was able to take him to game five was GW Sizzy. So shout out to him for that one. After beating GW Sizzy, though, it gets a little bit easier for Wrath beating Spritzy, Chunky Kong, Kobe, Jazo, Wilds, and Jazo once again. Just a very dominant win from him at this event. And even though he does get some good draws once he's in that top eight with the two FGC characters, I still think that he would have been able to win this event if he got someone like a Cola, like the Buzz. Maybe Light would have been a little bit tough, but he was just so exceptional i think wrath is the best sonic player in the world at just straight up 
camping. And I know it's kind of crazy to say that Sonic isn't the best Sonic at something, but Wrath is just so patient. He never strays away from the game plan. He does not give you an inch, and if you give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. Just such an impressive player. At the start of Smash Ultimate, he was someone that if he went to more events, he'd probably be one of the best, but he only shows up sometimes, so not really something to worry about, kind of a hidden talent. But now that he's consistently going to things, I think he could easily reach that top 30, maybe even top 20 status by the end of the year. And going into 2025, I think it's only going to get better. He's playing the best character in the game. He's piloting them correctly and he's just phenomenal so big props to him for winning the event no sets dropped and with that i thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed the sport it's been absolutely unreal as of late if there's anyone i left out think something i got wrong or if you just want to say hi leave a comment down below be sure to sub layer down there and i will see you all in the next one Bye bye